Good morning, friends, wherever you might be, and uh, welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And I um, hope you're having a cup of your favorite beverage out of one of these. <laughs> Uh, some good coffee. So, um, waiting for some more folks to get on here. We have, um, let's see, let's see who's aboard. Go ahead and share the link with your fishy friends. Let them know we're, we're uh, getting started. Hey, David. Hello to you. Daniel Lopez is here. Justice in Marine Land. What? Marine Land's. Zeolite blend is awesome. Okay, cool. And uh, 29 gallon mollies won't stop having babies. Always a good sign. Always a good sign that you're doing something right if they're if they're breeding. Uh, give me a sound and picture check, would you please? Um, anyone who's out there, John. Hey, John, one of my moderators. Hey, Cat Sailor. Good morning to you. And. Um, Moderators are those who uh, help keep the stream moving along smoothly and uh, and keep it PC since we are a family channel. <laughs> Hispanic mechanic, hello, my friend. And let's see here, Fishman Marcus. Good morning to you, Arbaglio. I mentioned already. Z Zip, hello, Z Zip. Vinoxki Fishkoto. Vinoski Fish Koto. I hope I said that right. And good morning to you. Hey, Ken. Let me see. Ta hey, Tom, over in Malibu. And a tsunami warning? A tsunami warning in Malibu? Wow. Well, you know, in California, you know there's going to be a lot of people out there who want to go out and, and see a tsunami. So uh, expect some crowds at the beaches. <laughs> Hey, Tony. Tony Cancellieri, Ben. Finally, I made it for a live. I'm glad you're here. My warm hello to you and mods and a lovely chat. Yep, we're glad you're here. My friend George is here, Fernandez. And uh, over in Canada, wow. We're expecting some snow here in Nashville. It's going to be hitting uh, tonight around midnight. So uh, we're getting our provisions and hope. Thankfully, the uh, fish room is staying nice and warm with that little floor heater and having an opening to the main house. I'm able to share some of the heat so the fish room doesn't get that cold. And of course, I've got a lot of heating going on inside the tanks. And um, I had to do some, uh, I know I didn't say hi to everybody, but uh, hello to everybody else. Let, let's, get, let's get on with it here. But I had a, uh, a few things occur this week kind of interesting and uh let's go ahead and officially start the uh, live stream here all right now it's official so i had a, a pretty interesting week in that i had a couple of equipment failures now i'll tell you if you ever if you ever uh, need to make a case, if I ever needed to make a case for having backups, um, this was certainly the week for it. It was one of those when it rains, it pours. First thing that happened is a um, a fluval a fluval pump uh, went out on me, and that's the fluval pump that's running the air the air stone in this 90, uh, 90 gallon behind me. There's a a stream of air coming up right here. Not sure if you can see it. it it's a lot of bubbles. And um, and it just stopped working. It was one of those big, heavy, fluval, uh, double outlet. I have it with a gang valve going into one, so it just so it just pushes air down down to the um, down to the air stone. And so it just stopped. A while back, it had started to rattle, and I uh, opened it up, and there was a screw that was loose. I tightened that up, stopped rattling, worked perfectly. But um, but all of a sudden it just it just died. It just uh, gave up the ghost. So um, fortunately, I had a backup, one of those old expert Matic, uh, expert Matic uh, air pumps with two outlets, 
and that's that's what's on top of here now. It's that I don't know if you folks remember if you saw the old that old video, and maybe one of the admins, one of the moderators can bring it up. I had a video where I um, where I did a review on an air pump, and uh, it has it has an adjustable top. In other words, it has a valve on the top or a dial where you can you can change the air pressure, and that was I like that a lot. But even at full blast, uh, it still isn't quite as powerful as that Fluval was. Now, this isn't a uh, knock on, it's not a knock on Fluval because, I mean, anything that runs, in my opinion, anything that runs 24 7 for, let's say, three or four years, the way that pump did, uh, I don't really, um, uh, yeah, I can't complain too much. You know, I mean, that's, that, that's like you know, someone, someone's canister filter or, uh, you know, you, you know, or a, uh, a pump fails after four or five years of running 24 seven. I mean, I, I, I kind of think you got your money's worth and sometimes those pumps run for 15, 20 years and that's great. But anyway, it's not a knock on the fluval. I think that fluval pump is great. Um, and the other thing that failed and it's funny, it was just both two, two major brands. The other one that failed was one of those Eheim, those real long Eheim 300 watt heaters. It just, stopped heating. It had the red light on like it was heating. And I was watching the tank go from 79 to, to you know, 78 to 76 to 74.5. And I, okay, wait, something's wrong here. So I uh, unplugged the heater, reached in, put my hand around it, felt no heat at all. Didn't feel warm at all. And so uh, I let it sit in the tank unplugged for about 15, 20 minutes, which uh, always, always acclimate your heaters before you pull them out of a tank or before you plug them in. So I unplugged the Eheim. I left it in the tank for about 15, 20 minutes while at the same time I, I put in a cobalt that I had. And um, you can see them here. Let's see if I can get them on the, on the camera here. Yeah, not sure if you can see it. It's behind that plant there, a cobalt. It's a flat black cobalt, 150 watt. It's a lot less watts, so it's not going to be as a, as effective as that Eheim was, which is a little bit of concern to me. Let me see here. Oh, what am I doing? I'm on the wrong side here. Here we go. Let me see. Is that it? Yeah, I think, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it back there, but anyway, there's a, there's a cobalt, one of those eco- eco cobalts in there and uh, so at any rate fortunately i had that I, I had that cobalt heater and that cobalt heater is a is a little bit of a crazy unit and i'll tell you why and uh, and cobalt did send me another one so I, I can't complain too much about it but i kept this one this cobalt heater every now and then i don't know why will will uh, arbitrarily reset itself to like 90 degrees, 85 degrees. I, I have it set at the default, which is 78 to 80 degrees. And then I'll, I'll go away and I'll come back and the green light will have moved over to like 85 or 90 as if I had set it to 85 or 90. So it would not be a, a usable heater if I didn't have it on a controller that cuts out at 80 degrees. So at 80 degrees, the controller cuts out the, elect the electricity, the power to that heater. And so because of that, uh, the fact that it arbitrarily changes its, its set temperature to 85 degrees doesn't matter. So, um, but anyway, it's a little bit of a, of a squirrely, sketchy heater that I, that I, but I knew I'd be using it with a controller, so it didn't matter to me that it would try and, and get too hot. I know some of the older cobalt heaters, and this might be one of the older generation ones, had that problem, and they got a bad rap. The newer cobalt, like the one I have in the 29-gallon behind this 90-gallon, there's a 29-gallon where I have the planted uh, project going, and uh, never a problem with that heater. Always stays exactly at uh, 70, 78 degrees. Anyway, so I had a couple, uh, uh, a couple equipment nine one ones, and then, uh, then I had a situation with the fish, which I'm going to be covering in a video. I have a video coming out uh, 
tomorrow, and it's going to be what to do with a fish that will not eat. So uh, all of a sudden, the, the, the Taiwan Reef just d has no interest in food, none. It just drips right by, it, right by his face, and it uh, doesn't matter if it's a flake, doesn't matter um, if, if, it's a, if it's a pellet. Uh, the, meanwhile, the other fish are like, you know, they're, they're, they're like piranha. Right, you've seen them eat in, in in prior live streams. I mean, they just go insane. So if you're not an aggressive eater, and you're not going after food, you're not going to get anything in that 210 gallon. You're just not going to eat because these fish are just too they're just too voracious. So uh, I pulled I pulled the Taiwan reef out, and interestingly enough, uh, the reason I had put him in the 210 was because he was he was so aggressive and was so assertive that I had to pull them out a little bit like a week early um, than I would have normally out of quarantine because he was being a bit abusive to the other two fish. So I said, okay, well, you're so, you know, you're such a gangster. Let me put you in the 210. And uh, I'm hoping he was just intimidated and um, or felt so subdominant that he just wouldn't eat. I'm hoping that's what it was because he has uh, good color. He's active. To some degree, uh, he just doesn't eat. And uh, you can see him here. He's in there somewhere. Hold on. Looks like he knew I was uh, going to photograph him. And so he went ahead and hid. But he's, he's hiding behind that, that um, filter in the corner there. Anyway, that's the Taiwan Reef. And so when I put the Taiwan Reef back in there, what I ended up doing was pulling out two fish that were ready to come out. And um, the two fish, one of them is going to be featured in an upcoming uh, video. And uh, I'll probably do a video about the other one, too. They're just beautiful fish. And uh, let me see if I can get them on camera here for you. I've been striking out. There's a, um, an emerald or a, a, a turquoise cichlid. And I've never had a turquoise cichlid that actually um, was showing its turquoise color. And he's right, right here. And the other fish that's in there that I'm really excited about and that I'm releasing a video on is the, um, is the Fusco. If you know my channel, you know I'm crazy about about Fusco's, and uh, it was it it was probably one of my favorite first first cichlids, and uh, I'll try and track with him a little bit here. There he is, the bottom right hand corner. Fusco's are part of that Nimbochromus family. He'll get pretty big. He'll get he'll get around ten inches. He's a cousin to the Venusus and the living stone eye that's in there. And when I put it put when I put him in, he they all got along fine. No one no one was really chasing anybody. Didn't get that normal sort of welcome to the tank, we're gonna beat the daylights out of you. That normally happens with cichlids. So he's getting along fine and he has a very, very good markings. Really, really nice markings. If I can get him to come out of that corner.
blue and rust and um, just some really pretty colors on him. Just very excited about that fish. I'm really looking forward to watching him color up and uh, put on some size. And he will be comparable in size to both the Venusis and the Living Stone Eye. The, um, maybe not have as much bulk, as much of that, you know, that, that girth, that width. Uh, the, the Venusis and the Living Stone Eye, from my experience, have, have, are, are um, they're just a little bit thicker as fish, the, uh, where the Fusco can be a little bit leaner. But um, they're all getting along fine. I'm so I've got three Nimbochromus in there, no notorious for being outrageously um, aggressive fish, and they have absolutely no interest in each other. And even the Living Stone Eye has has toned down quite a bit after I gave him that uh, that short vacation in the 55 gallon. I put him back in and I rearranged the aquarium. He hasn't really claimed any real territory, and he does he does fire up. He does go all blue after a water change and um, loses his spots. You know, kind of goes into breeding dress, which is interesting because there's no females in there. But, um, but he seems calmed down. You know, he's calmed down quite a bit. So we'll see. We'll see because as these fish put on size— they can start to become more assertive as any cichlid keeper knows, right? Any, at any moment, everything can change. So, uh, so stay tuned. <laughs> so at any rate, um, what else has been going on? The tank behind me here, this, uh, in the 90 gallon, there's, there's been some relative peace in the, in the 90 gallon. I, I think, a combination of putting in the, um, you know, breaking up the line of sight with this large plant right here. So I broke the line of sight, giving uh, giving the fish a place to, to hide. And, of course, right while I'm talking about it, we have a little face-off. These two, the two viejas, those are two varieties of a vieja. And they're always facing off. They haven't lip-locked yet, but they face off and they stare each other down. And, and somehow then they both just walk away, and it doesn't get too violent. But, uh, but for the most part, I'm not seeing the kind of craziness I was seeing in there before where I was actually considering pulling out one of the viejas and uh, putting them into a separate tank. And uh, let's see. Let me keep a little close-up of it. There you go. You can see the uh, the Jack Dempsey there is just looking beautiful. Love that Jack Dempsey. Found out it's a girl. So it went from being Tom to Tomasita. That large, um, this large vieja here is, is, by, is, is definitely the tank boss. I don't think anybody messes with him. I do have a Nicaragua cichlid in there that's pretty assertive. Uh, looks like I have a male and a female, and uh, but no one messes with this large with the large vieja. There's the Nicaragua on the bottom bottom right there. There's a couple uh, Geophagus cerimonensis in there and a couple AC Heclis, and there's a uh, red shoulder Severum that is very very shy, hangs out in the back, and will come out every now and then. I post I post pictures of them on Instagram. You can see them on Instagram. But I think the uh, adding that plant helped a lot. I redecorated. I moved moved the wood around. I think all those factors contributed to calming things down. So we have some momentary peace in the fish room. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> I 
So let's see what you guys let, let's see what you guys and gals are uh, are, are talking about here. <clears throat> All right. Sometimes I don't know if I should be answering a question or that you're or are you just having a conversation between yourselves? And uh, but I'm going to scroll through the uh, through the chat here and see if I see anything. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them now. I'll also check and see if I missed any super chats, super chats, or will you have an opportunity to support the channel by um, throwing a little a little cash at it? Well, Dan, you know that um, the Cichlid Shack, Dan Coat, the Cichlid Shack is a uh, sponsor of the channel. So um, I've had success with other locations, of course, but I certainly feel a loyalty to uh, James Largo and um, all the all the Cichlids that you see in my in my 210. Actually, I think almost all of my fish right now, except for maybe a couple of the South Americans in the 55, and of course the the green tears that I got from Brandon. Uh, Brandon, the blind fish keeper on YouTube, check out his channel. And um, all those are from the Cichlid Shack. And um, while I'm thinking about it, I want to just do a quick uh, quick shout out to James at the Cichlid Shack. Very often he's uh, doing shipping and packaging and, and listening to the live stream. So uh, here you go, James. Here's a shout out. Be sure to use Shack Attack 10 on any order for 10% off. And... Um, Shack Attack 15, if you order fish for over, and it comes up to over $100, you can save 15%. Use Shack Attack 15, and that should work. Uh, James Largo, as far as I know, assuming things go as planned, and of course things can always change, but as far as I know, he will be attending Aquashella. So we'll be uh, walking around, hanging around, and um, we'll be doing um, some work. I, I was contacted by the uh, fish tubers, at Aquashella, so I will be I will be coming around the desk there, and even doing a live stream from Aquashella on the Aquashella channel, and uh, and I'll maybe maybe even interview James at Aquashella. We'll see, and uh, how that's going to go. Also, for those of you who'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a Patreon. There's a link up there for Patreon. And uh, you get videos that are just for you, unique Patreon videos. And at certain levels of membership, you get you get certain kinds of swag. And uh, also, uh, if you use this Amazon uh, link to get to Amazon, you can um, support the channel. Whether you buy something from my Amazon store or anywhere on Amazon, if you go there using the Amazon link, it will support the channel. If you want mugs and uh, T-shirts and uh, other channel swag, that also supports the channel. And you can get those through uh, through Spring, through my Teespring store. There are links underneath the banner of my channel. If you're on a computer, you'll see the banner on. You'll see the links on the banner. So uh, that's the end of the commercial. But we've got to pay the bills, <laughs> and uh, that's the truth. And a big shout out to the founding Patreon members. And I'm scrolling their names and uh, maybe embarrassing them a little bit. But uh, thank you, Patreon members, for all your help. You are making a big difference and helping to get me to, to Aquashella, which was something I wasn't sure I was going to be able to make this year. So um, let's see what you folks have. If you have a question, let me know. I'm looking at the chat right now. And let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, Kent, uh, Kent, is it is it Kent uh, Kent Stablet? Kent Stablet, love your channel. Thank you, Kent. If you want to add a new fish, do you need to add a minimum of three, or can you add just one? And um, you know, the, uh, you can add just, I have very successfully added just one fish and I've done that. Uh, usually here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll give the fish in the tank a pretty good feeding. So their, uh, their tummies are full 
And um, so, you know, they, they're they feeling satiated. Then what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll turn the lights off. I'll turn the lights off in the tank, and then I'll add that one fish. And uh, when the lights come on, I mean, essentially it's like, you know, in their little fish brains, there's another fish there. And uh, I don't even know if they go through a, uh, you know, hey, where you'd co- where'd you come from? Or uh, <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, I guess you've always been here. I never noticed you. I mean, so I've had it work. Now, that being said, if there's a fish in the tank, if it's an African cichlid tank and there's a fish in the tank that's very similar to that fish, uh, let's say, um, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, you put two of the same kind of fish in there. Let's say you put two uh, red empresses in there, two male red empresses. Uh, you you may have a momentary skirmish until one establishes dominance. If you have a crazy fish, like I did with that dragon blood or even that phoenix, uh, and the fish just tries to kill the fish, then you've got other problems. But if it's just the usual, let me just show you who's boss now that you're here, that skirmish shouldn't last too long. It should, it should go maybe a little while. And I always recommend that whenever you do anything in a tank, add fish, uh, do a major cleaning, redecorate, uh, you know, clean your filters, anything, any major step, uh, it's probably a good idea to hang out, hang out for a little while. Well, I'd say a couple hours, you know, just, just be in and out. You know, yeah, go to the kitchen, go out buy tea, come back. I mean, just keep an eye on things and just make sure they don't go crazy. One of the biggest mistakes I ever made was make a, a major change to my tank and then go to sleep. I did it right before bed. Woke up the next morning. I had about seven or eight dead fish. And uh, if I if I, if I had done it in the middle of the day and paid attention, I would have noticed that I had changed the oxygen um, sort of exchange in the tank, and I would have seen them at the top gasping, and I would have been able to either you know add an air stone or um, you know change back to the way it was before the outputs of the of the canisters, and I would have been able to catch it and save those fish, including and this is when Fusco's became very kind of. This is when Fusco, my first Fusco that had a lot of red in his body, was beautiful, became very special to me. I lost that fish and that mistake. And that's why I, I've been trying so hard to get a Fusco. And uh, finally, James got one over at the Cichlid Shack, and we were able to work it out. But at any rate, yeah, hang out if you can after you make a major change in your tank. And... Uh, Let's say you're using, let's say you've added something new to your filter, a new type of media, you, you, you've uh, added some decor, you, you've tried a new food, anything really. Just kind of hang out for a little while and just see how they're doing. And uh, that way you can take action very, very quickly if you need to. So I, I, I hope that answered your question, Kent. And um, I have added one fish. I've added, uh, I've added 10 fish. Certainly, if you add more than three fish, I would condition the tank, maybe even consider adding a little bacteria. Uh, I depends on the size of the fish. I mean, if they're very large fish that are going to eat a lot and produce a lot of ammonia, you don't want to outrun your bacteria and create a little mini cycle in the tank. If you do that, if you do create a mini cycle, you'll, you'll notice a little bit of fogginess. You'll get a little bit of a bloom in the tank, and that tells you that you've... You've killed off too much back. You, you've started a bit of a mini cycle. Ask me how I know. And you'll probably have a die off from the reaction to ammonia. Hey, GP. GP comes through with a $10 super chat. Thank you, GP. I appreciate the support, my friend. And uh, I wish you could come down to Aquashella. I know it's a bit of a trek for you, but uh, that would be nice to meet you in person. And hey, Dan, Dan Lopez comes in with a super chat. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate that. So let's see what else we got here. TN Charlie, are you preparing for uh, possibly bad weather in 
mid Tennessee tonight, possibly power loss. Um, we've been really uh, fortunate with power losses here, and um, we've had only a couple short ones. Apparently, we have a very strong grid. I do need to invest in a in uh, some backup in a generator. And I'm just not sure if I'm going to be going with USB. Uh, is that what they're called, the USB types, or possibly? Um, I mean, I have lithium powered um, air pumps that can keep circulation going, keep oxygen in the tanks, which I think is the major killer of the fish when the power goes out. You have zero movement, zero, uh, you know, CO2 and oxygen exchange going on. Uh, and so I do have the lithium powered air pumps that, that I can drop in. But um, for heat and filtration, if I had a very long blackout, like the kind they had in uh, Texas, I would be in trouble. I'd be in trouble. So uh, my next investment is going to be, um, and again, this is where I thank you folks for subscribing and watching the videos and supporting the channel um, because the channel is has to be self-sustaining. I, I, don't, I don't work right now. I'm retired. So um, the channel supports itself with what it can generate, and that's what I'm going to use to uh, buy a generator. And... Uh, so that is going to be the next investment for sure. All right. Let's see. Any other questions here? Ask me now. <laughs> John Wallace says generator is the way to go. Yeah. I hear you, GP, on Aquashella. It's about a... Between rooms and flights, I think I'm up to about $1,000. And and then, of course, you've got four days away from your tanks um, and family and everything else. So it's a, it's, a, it's a commitment. It's a bit of a commitment. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel Lopez, I appreciate that. Hey Jerry, Jerry says he has one in Florida. Yeah, I guess you get uh, you get some pretty serious wet weather in Florida. Um, I'll be seeing you, Jerry. I'll be seeing you at Aquashella, and I love what you're going to be doing with Brandon, the blind fish keeper. And definitely, we'll catch some lunch while we're in Florida. Uh, Tony, that that's. Uh, that's terrible. Tony had one of his tanks start leaking. He had to move his Tropius into the Mabuna tank. And I, I can't see him, so probably he's dead, stuck in the rocks. Was too quick to move the fish in. Perhaps unsuitable tank. Yeah, I tell you, that's, uh, that's a rough one. That's a rough one. I have a little five-gallon tank that I keep running. I'm not sure if you can... You can see it with that light I have right there, but um, I have a five-gallon tank that I keep running at all times uh, that I can drop fish into. And uh, I also have a 29-gallon that's empty. That if I And I keep a lot of filter media in the sump. I keep pieces of, of sponge in the sump. So I could pull a piece of sponge out, put it into a small hang-on-back filter, attach it to the 29, and, and uh, put half tank water and half... You know, but when you're when things are leaking, I mean, you go into a panic. You you're just trying to save, do whatever you can, and so I hear you. I hear you. I hope the leak is high up in the tank. I hope it's a leak you can fix, and not a crack in the glass. And um, because you can, you can you can reseal them. Let's see here. Uh, Cameron, is it Cameron Hasid? Cameron Hasid, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Cameron. Uh, Cameron is saying that he has a uh, a sump on a, and an FX6 on a 120. That's 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 a lot of filtration for a 120. That's good. But somehow can't get rid of cloudy water. I've cut the food down, et cetera, but in three days. Well, my first question is um, how old is the tank? 
because if it's a, it's a relatively new tank, you are going to get some cloudiness. That's normal and actually a bit of a good sign in that you're actually cycling. I just released a video not that long ago. Maybe one of the moderators can find it and provide you with the link on um, clearing up a cloudy tank. There are several ways you can go. If you want to go uh, chemical-free, you can go get some crib batting untreated. In other words, it can't be uh, fire-resistant or fire-retardant, whatever. Just plain old uh, polyfill and throw polyfill into your filter. That might work. Another thing that might work is... Um, if you don't mind, a little bit of chemical filtration, at least temporarily. You can use uh, Matrix, Seachem Matrix. The stuff is crazy, crazy uh, absorbent. After a month, you throw it away because it 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 will it it does uh, use up. You know, it does it does get uh, to a point where it it kind of loses its effectiveness. I run it for about a month, and uh, it's the best carbon I've been able to to find. Just put some in a very fine mesh bag and drop it into your filter. Matrix carbon. You can also um, you can also use uh, products like Boyd Industries uh, Chemi Pure. I doubt you have plants, uh, but if you do, you can use Chemi uh, Chemi Pure Green uh, or Chemi Pure Blue. And you can also use uh, products like Seachem Purigen. Comes in a bag, or you can buy it loose, Seachem Purigen. And these are just like a polymer, uh, super absorbent, super absorbent uh, product that, that, that captures, that captures uh, fine particles and that are floating in your tank. And... Um, the other thing is, I think there's a product by Seachem called Clarity. Clarity, you can use that. And I think Fritz, Fritz has Monster 360, I think it's called. Monster 360. Hold on one second. Hold the phone. Yeah, this is Monster 360. It's by Fritz, and it's a biological conditioner that removes sludge and organic, organic debris. And uh, this bottle treats 4,730 gallons. That should probably handle your aquarium. <laughs> and uh, what it does is it binds. What, what it does essentially is it binds with um, with what's floating around. Reduces, simplifies maintenance, promotes a clean, clear, healthy aquarium, sludge eliminating bacteria, rapidly digest waste. I guess the bacteria is eating the waste and naturally reduces odors. So, yeah, I think it attaches, it attaches to stuff. You use one cup or one capful for 25 gallons, one capful for 25 gallons, and the bacteria will eat the part of, you know, what you got floating around there. So I hope that helps. If, if it's a brand new aquarium, it will go away by itself. Over time, you just have to be a little patient. And uh, But if it's an established aquarium, and all of a sudden it started to get cloudy, you may have... Uh, you may have jump-started the uh, cycle for some reason. Maybe you did a little bit of an over-cleaning. You know, you did a, a vacuuming and a filter cleaning, and you did too much. You might have started the cycle again. Uh, but if it's a if it's a brand new aquarium, it's it's normal. It's normal. But there are lots of ways you can go between polyfill, uh, pinky floss. Pinky floss can work. Uh, not as as effective as polyfill. I personally don't like polyfill that much because it does come undone a little bit and the little hairs get into your sponges and and are impossible to remove. But it's not a, not a real big deal, I guess. But I stopped using polyfill because of that. It was breaking up a little bit on me. But um, pinky floss works. 
and and the products I mentioned, they all work. If you go to my if you go to my uh, Amazon store, you can find a lot of those products listed there. All right, let's see what else we got going on here. Tony, thanks, Ben. You're right. I got into a panic trying to save them. Consolation, I managed to save the remaining six ones. Good. That's good news, Tony. I'm glad to hear that. I'll tell you, there's, there's, that feeling you get when you go by your tank, and uh, I mean, I had it yesterday. Yesterday, I did a water change, and I filled, I filled the rimless behind me a little bit too high, and the the bubbler was creating a little bit of a, a buildup of of liquid on the top rim, which was then dripping down. Well, you know, I go off, I have lunch, and I do some things. I come back, and there's a stream of water running from the 90 uh, towards the garage door, right? And, you know, until you, until you figure out that it's nothing extremely serious, or in your case, Tony, something really serious— I mean, you have that momentary panic, like, is my aquarium going to going to burst? Which happens. Aquariums, uh, if you search on YouTube, you'll see examples of where the, the, the seams have given way and the aquarium bursts. And so you have this initial panic, right? And uh, you get a little frantic sometimes. And then after you catch your breath, you, you can go into the woulda, shoulda, coulda, you know, well, I don't know, maybe I should have just put a bucket and and kind of done this and done that, or maybe I could have got a tote, put an air stone in it, move some of the decor into it, which has beneficial bacteria, throw a few handfuls of substrate, which has beneficial bacteria, you know, so having a tote, that's not a bad idea. Have a tote, a big, um, maybe a, a big styrofoam cooler. A big styrofoam cooler would work, you know, anything that you can throw the fish into and can serve as a temporary housing until you can figure out what's going on. But yeah, I get it. I get it, Tony. All right. So, um, one of the things I like about Pyrogen is that you can recharge Pyrogen usually about eight times. You can do a uh, bleach and water conditioner. There's there's some exact steps you have to follow, uh, but you can recharge it and use it over and over again. The um, the ChemiPure products, I believe, they run for several months, and then you have to toss them. You have to throw them out. So uh, some people don't like to recharge Pyrogen, though. They don't like to put something in bleach and uh, and then back into the aquarium. But the truth is that the... the Apparently, the, the things that are harmful in bleach will gas off, just like back in the day when all they used was chlorine. You could put your tap water into a tote, and the chlorine would gas off, and in 24 to 48 hours, you could use that water without any conditioner. You can't do that anymore because they're using chloramine, which is, I think it's bound with ammonia, and it doesn't go away. It just stays. It just stays in the water. So you still have to condition, even if you're using totes and putting water in before water changes. You still have to condition that water because the chloramine doesn't go away. But in chlorine, uh, apparently it gases off. But still, some people don't want to recharge pyrogen because they're afraid of the uh, of using bleach uh, products. And uh, you go you go like a day in a fifty fifty bleach solution. Uh, you know, half water, half bleach. Then you go for a day uh, in a strong dose of water conditioner, and then you rinse the the daylights out of it, right? I mean, I would rinse the heck out of it after the bleach step, and then I would put it in the water with with a conditioner for a day, and then I'd rinse the heck out of it again, and uh, and then it was reusable, and I never had a problem. I never had fish display any discomfort after putting it in. So. Uh, all right, let's see who else is here. And Daniel Lee, any idea why my male flower horn hump? I called a kook, a cock, kook, kook. I forget what they call that hump. Deflates for a week or so, 
and then comes back bigger than ever. It happens twice now. He's six months old. I have no idea. I've I've never kept uh I've never kept uh flower horns. I think they're kind of cute the way they interact. Uh I know they're they're very aggressive. And so they have to live alone, um, except maybe if you're pairing them. But I have no idea why that would happen. No idea. I mean, but if it comes back bigger than before, I guess you have nothing to worry about. Uh, be, I mean, personally, and this is just me, and I know that some of you out there are not going to like this, but I, I prefer the female because I don't like that big that big brainy brainiac thing going on in there. Uh, it just doesn't seem natural to me. Uh, but anyway, it's a little bit like paired fish. I mean, paired fish to me, it just, or certain kinds of, um, certain kinds of goldfish that can barely swim. You know, these goldfish are just real fat and they have these long fanning fins and yeah, they're pretty, but um, they can barely swim. I mean, they're just so, and it's just years and years of, of, uh, of the sort of genetic engineering that's kind of led to that fish. But um, anyway, I like, I like the females. I love the markings and the coloration on them. Do me to get on a rant on that. A social disc, discus ing. Social discus ing. How are you? Do you know if anyone bought the killer fish yet you dropped off at the critter the um i don't know about the phoenix but i do know that the dragon blood was gone in like a couple hours i mean i was like hanging around looking at stuff and they they were acclimating him and uh he was gone i mean he was a beautiful fish and i told the guy you know just be sure to you should let him know that this guy's a little testy so Hopefully he's in a good home. I think if he goes into a tank with bigger cichlids, he'll behave. But, um, you know, he's not going to get that big. He's not going to get as big as some haps, right? So, uh, but yeah, the, the dragon blood was gone instantly, and I don't know about the phoenix. The phoenix had a little bit of a foggy eye, and that might make people a little reluctant to buy him. But if they offer, uh, if they offer him for a good price, he'll sell for sure. He's in haps. I just don't get flower horns. <laughs> oh, I like the females. The colors are beautiful. GP had a flower horn, lived for about three years. Dan Coat, Ben took the words out of my mouth about parrots. Yeah, they're just some fish. I mean, and to each their own, you know, just like glowfish. I don't think I'll ever own a glowfish, but uh, some people love them. And, and sometimes these fish are the, uh, the fish that gets a person into the hobby. You know, I mean, I, I've been at local aquarium stores several times when I see small kids run up to the glowfish tank. And so if that creates a future fish keeper, then I think it's good for the hobby. You know, I think it's a... I think it's a good thing. So I can't I can't complain too much about glowfish. They're helping they're helping build the hobby. Jerry's uh just re home dragon blood, flame tail, and a yellow lab to the blind fish keeper. Well, I'm pretty sure he has a standalone tank for that flower horn. Because I heard that they are merciless. They are really, uh, really something. Yeah, uh, Fishman Marcus, that's it. The, the Ru Rukins and Chabukins, those are the ones I'm thinking about. They're just, they're just these chubby little uh, uh, koi-colored meatballs that, with a bunch of flowing fins, and they, they, would, they would never make it in a natural selection. I mean, a, a bigger fish would come on, just pick them off. You know, so they, so they're definitely sort of a a bit of a test tube fish, that that was bred for long fins and a fat body, and um, 
would not evolve sort of naturally, I don't think. <laughs> uh, just my two cents on it. But and anyway, if you keep them, I mean, I know, I think, I think Corey at the aquarium co-op, I think Corey had some at one point, you know, behind him in that big tank. He was always kind of swapping and changing around. And I think he had some of those big goldfish in there. And uh, anyway, yeah, but people like him. Ricky uh, De Hoyos, hey guys, sorry I'm late. Now, Ricky, you know, you have to bring a note when you're late. You have to bring a note. You have to bring an excuse. <laughs> Send the note to ben.o.cichlid at gmail. <laughs> uh, just messing with you. All right. So um, any more questions here as we start to, to, to wind up? Do you have any more questions for me? Hey, Casual Aquatics. Glad you made it. John Wallace for videos on water changes and controlling nitrates. Yeah, I have uh, quite a few uh, playlists. Do you folks ever check out the playlists? I'm just curious. You know, and, uh, YouTube encourages us to, uh, to create these playlists, and I have playlists on different subjects. I'm just wondering if you folks ever, ever get into those playlists. Uh, social uh, uh, discus, discussing, I am not considering currently a guppy or platy breeding tank, even though uh, some of the guppies, like snakeskin guppies, some of them are just absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, right? Love them. Uh, just that, like there's some male, uh, there, there's some bettas out there that I just think are absolutely breathtaking. But uh, part of what I'm trying to do um you know, as I move towards the that planted tank project and that 300 gallon, is I'm not trying to do too much too fast, and I don't want to get to that point where uh, my fish become a chore, and um, and I feel like it's it's just uh, too much work or um, takes away too much time. You know, being a new grandfather and having other interests, whether it's fishing, bike riding, spending time with my family. Uh, there are other things I like to do, and so I, I don't, I don't want to get to a point where I ever feel like I'm not in the mood or don't have the energy to do the steps I need to do. And right now, I put in um, a fair number of hours every week, uh, keeping the tanks up to speed, and um, and I'm enjoying it. I look forward to it. I love doing it. Some jobs like cleaning a canister filter or servicing a sump, I might have a little bit of a pause, uh, a little bit of initial initial reluctance because it's a big job. But uh, I do enjoy doing them, and I love the satisfaction of having them done. Now, if I was to have, let's say, a rack of 10 breeding, breeding tanks, uh, another 10 tanks for fry, and uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to risk getting to a point where it stops being fun. And uh, anyway, that's a, a real long, a long answer for you. So. Aqua Seekin, I use playlists all the time, like flipping channels. Cool. And by playlists, uh, just to make sure we're talking about the same thing, uh, I'm talking about like like I have a controlling nitrates playlist. I have a cichlid aggression playlist. I have a best fish keeping tips playlist. And these playlists might have um, anywhere from 10 to, to 100 to 300 videos on them. And uh, you could technically click on the playlist and it would just play one video automatically after another. And I'm just wondering if that's something that people actually tap into. All right, let's see here. Uh, Andrew Mays. Andrew Mays, yes, I have kept Frontosa. I had a Frontosa named Eeyore. He was given to uh, Kevin Green, who shows up from time to time. He's a moderator. And um, I think he's helping out the Aquarium Co-op quite a bit these days. The Aquarium Co-op, um, 
is uh, they they actually I think they they have uh, they have a, a paid crew, and I'm not sure if they would pay. I'm not sure if Kevin is on the payroll or not. But anyway, he does work with uh, with them, but he does come around here every now and then, and he has he had Eeyore now. I think he had to re, uh, rehome he had, because when he uh, he moved and he sold his old tanks and he got rid of that Frontosa. But it was an awesome Frontosa. And I wanted to put him in a Frontosa-only tank, and uh, and that's what he had. So I gave him Eeyore. And uh, then he ended up buying my 60-gallon, the tank that I used to sit in front of and go, this is Ben Ochart with the 60-gallon cyclic tank. That used to be my old starting line here on YouTube, he bought that tank and it had my, um, had Photoshop in it, my red cap, Lethronops red cap, and um, a bunch of other great fish, some other Lethronops, a, a red shoulder, a bushy nose pleco. Anyway, he got a great deal on that aquarium. Um, I gave it to him with uh, two, I think it had two canisters and a hang on back. The stand, the aquarium, the decor, and the fish. I think it's about two hundred bucks out the door. But I really wanted to go to a really wanted to go to a good home, so that was important to me. Uh, John uh, Wallace, I'll keep you in mind. <laughs> uh, you know. Jerry, on your Frontosa, I, I've heard that um, I've, I've heard that they really like to be in a a a more dimly lit tank, and ideally a species only tank. And if that's not the situation, their temperament they can get they can get stressed out. That's why I I, I gave away Eeyore because I wanted him to be in a tank that was set up for Frontosa which was more dimly lit and was only Frontosa. And, uh, and boy, he, he perked up. He, he was much act, much more active and happier there. So, um, yeah, it, it's, I'm not sure if, if it would be that someone's picking on him or he just might feel intimidated. Like maybe what's going on with my, with, with my, um, Pen, uh, Taiwan, Reef, a feeling of, of subdominance or intimidation. Uh, it could be a variety of factors. Hopefully, he doesn't have any any thing on his gills, any flukes or parasites. If he's eating and active, his tummy isn't sunken in, his poops look normal. Uh, I mean, also they need a lot of room. I mean, they need to be in a minimum six foot tank. They're you know they they get very very big. Will feel very cramped in anything under six feet. But ideally, they should be with other frontos. I think that's where they're the happiest. Uh, Leo Boy One, are you still using Sun Sun canisters? Currently, I have a Sun Sun Seven O Four B as a backup, and uh, but it's not being used. If I had a problem with one of my filters, I could actually uh, bring it into use. I swapped out the O ring, and so it's in perfect shape. Looks like a lot of you use playlists. Okay, good. Excellent. I'll keep maintaining them. I'll keep them up. You know, I add things to playlists every time I post a video. Yeah, Tony, you could spend quite a time, quite a while. I don't know how many videos I have now, like 700. I think I have 700 videos <laughs> You'd spend a lot of time. Now, some of the early ones you'll laugh because the uh, the video quality is so uh, is so uh, <laughs> so weak. I went back and watched some of them. I look all red or all green, and uh, the sound is crackling. And anyway, anyway, that's uh, yeah. You could spend a lot of time watching those. Uh, Vince. Joey, I guess you're referring to the king of DIY. Uh, Joey has an awesome looking Frontosa tank. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's all Frontosa, right? So uh, that's really where they, they tend to kind of chill out and be happy. And sometimes they pair up and they are difficult to, I heard they are difficult to breed in captivity, but you know, they can live 30 years. They can live 30 years. So I'm going to be, 
I'm going to be 67 on the 26th of this month. And uh, so I wouldn't buy a Juvie Frontosa. I have a, I have a rule. I'm not going to buy a fish that could outlive me. <laughs> it's like buying, buying a parrot, you know. <laughs> a parrot can go like 100 years, right? I'm not going to have to put the parrot in my will. <laughs> All right, yeah. The um, when uh, Joe Joe Adder, what what I use is I use a um, I use a food grade silicone lubricant. I've heard petroleum jelly. There could be some problems. I've heard petroleum jelly, and even with uh, with Vaseline, I heard there could be some issues. I'm not entirely sure, but I use a fo food grade silicone lubricant, kind of stuff that you could actually eat and it would be I wouldn't recommend you eat it but you could eat it and it's okay that's right hey Brandon's here blind uh, blind fish keeper how are you my friend the uh, check out his channel also check out Jerry's channel Jerry's fish room be sure to check out Jerry's fish room and check out the blind fish keeper and uh yeah, that 60 gallon. People thought it was like a bigger tank because I used to run it at an angle. So I'd be sitting at one corner of it and then have the camera across it. And people used to always ask, wow, how big is that tank? And I'd tell them, hey, it's uh, it's uh, FX, it's special effects. <laughs> All right. All right. So, casual aquatics. Any more questions? Go ahead and ask them now. I've got the chat up. And as you can see, all the fish are looking at the chat and are very interested. <laughs> are you going to Aquashella? If you're going to Aquashella, go ahead and tell me in the chat. I know Jerry's going. Should be fun. The most fun part of Aquashella for me is meeting people. I, I, I like the displays. You know, I like I like seeing new equipment. Like I like seeing what uh, Oasis is doing with canisters. I like visiting, um, you know, I'm going over to the uh, Shisha booth, right? And uh, that was fun. And, uh, you know, but, but bumping into other YouTubers and meeting like the rep from Fritz and, uh, and you know, people like that. That was fun. That was, the, the people was the most most fun part for me. All right. And I'll tell you though, uh, if you love, if you like the look of a paired fish, if you like the look of a, a male, uh, it, it, it doesn't, it, it, it's your thing. You know, if you like glowfish, it's your thing. You know, I, I think that there's uh way more important issues in the world to uh, get into heated discussions about than what fish are keeping uh, or what, what fish people are keeping. So, um, hey, whatever you like, uh, keep whatever you like. I think that's cool. HVS 100 uh, Cat Sailor, is that that husky HVS 100 silicone grease? Is that that Husky Green? I think it's the Husky brand. That's what I use. And I think it works up. I think it works great. So I think we're, we're slipping over the hour. If you want to get your uh, final comments in, get them in now. I really appreciate all of you showing up. And uh, if you haven't already done so, uh, be sure to hit that, that sub button. I think I get about 30, maybe 25% subscribers, and the rest are unsubscribed who watch the videos. And so hit that subscriber button, the bell, and uh, notification bell, and the thumbs up if you haven't already. I appreciate that. And uh, I want to thank all of you for spending an hour with me on Saturday. I will be doing a live stream again next Saturday. And watch for the video on uh, what to do when a fish will not eat. If that's happened to you, you know how frustrating it is. Uh, that video will be tomorrow's video. And then I have a couple um, a couple species profiles, a couple fish profiles on a frontosa 
and on the electric blue Acara, uh, two very beautiful cichlids that I'm uh, that I really really love. So watch for those videos next week. Thank you all for sitting in, and uh, thank you to my wonderful moderators. Shout out to the Cichlid Shack for sponsorship, and one more quick shout out to the uh, Garage Gang. I hit the wrong button there. Let me see. that it? Nope. Well, you know who you are, Garage Gang. <laughs> There's the Garage Gang. By the way, I have a t-shirt and a coffee cup with the Garage Gang on it. Be sure to look for it. And uh, I think that's it for me. Thank you so much, my friends. You are the best. My moderators are the best on YouTube, and you folks are the best subscribers and the best fans, that's for sure. All right, I will see you folks next week. And, uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much.